Are you, are you ready for some football? It's Thursday. It's Thursday, December 22nd. There's a Jags-Jets game tonight. And the algorithm says it's 25-21 Jaguars. I'm not playing that game. I, I lost uh, 300 bucks yesterday. A little more than 300 bucks, actually. Uh, which is okay, because I won $4,000 a day before. But uh, combined picks yesterday in college basketball, hockey, and NBA were a combined 5-19. and 19. I haven't seen a 2-7 and seven college basketball day in a long time, and that's what I had yesterday. So I'm taking a break today, but there is football to talk about, so we're doing the video about football for the week and get that out of the way, because I'm on the run today. I'm, I, I really don't have time for a lot of this. So let, let's get through it and see. I, I've already reviewed it once. I can tell you picks that I'm going to probably throw on a round robin for this weekend. So that Jags game does have them as an underdog Jaguars winning today by four, but I'm staying away from that. It says empirically they're a worse team, but point projections say they win. So it's a conflict, but it's a mess. Some interesting things on this list though, right? It's Chiefs winning at a bad line and covering, but winning. The Lions winning at a reasonable line of minus 135. So Lions are the best lineup here when it comes to a team that's supposed to win apparently by 14 points, they say, 37 to 23. Really thinks the Lions can do that. Next is Tampa Bay. I'm not a fan of Tampa Bay, but algorithm apparently is here, and Arizona's not good. So it says Tampa Bay wins there. I'm staying away from that. But I will take the Lions as much as I bite my tongue on that. I'll take them. Saints supposed to beat the Browns 34-22 in Cleveland. The weird thing about this game is the over-under is set at 32 if that was typed in correctly. I have not seen an over-under set at 32 in a long time. You got a blizzard in Cleveland. Like, what is happening there? That's the craziest thing I've seen in a while. So, I mean, they can't get to 17-16, right? Like, seriously? I don't know. It says they can't. Uh, sorry, it says the algorithm says they can. It's the odds makers say they can't. So you've got New Orleans, an underdog, not Orleans, an underdog line of plus 130, and it's also saying over by a ton, right? By a ton, by 24 points. So there's clearly a weather situation going on in Cleveland that's screwing that up. But even if you bring the magnifier down, I mean, that's a really, really low over-under. I have not seen that in a while. Steelers are at a reasonable line to beat the Raiders at home. It says they can do that by nine points. How about that? So Raider, uh, Steelers to win. So you got the Lions at a reasonable line, Steelers at a reasonable line, and the Saints at an underdog line in a game that's supposedly apparently supposed to have no points, according to the odds makers. Bills at minus 380, they do probably beat the Bears. So I'm just going to take the minus 380 because it's a terrible line, but they should win. And if they don't, they don't, but they're supposed to win. And the Bears are not a very good team. Eagles-Cowboys is a tougher call because I don't know if, if the Eagles are really going to be trying all that much and whether or not Dallas Dallas needs to try, right? Like they, they need to stay in the wild card lead or something maybe. This requires a review of standings that I haven't fully done. So I believe non-numerical factors or who is going to be fighting harder in this game is more coming into play. And the odds makers, I think, agree with that because the odds makers are favoring Dallas. So they must need to win. But Philly plus five is not necessarily a bad idea because they're empirically a better team. And if these teams met in the playoffs, it would say that that Philly would win a higher scoring game. So tougher call there, but I, I'm on the edge. I'm on the I, I think Philly plus five is round robin a ball because if it's a close one, the Dallas wins by a field goal, you still win with Philly plus five points. Says the Ravens over Atlanta by four, but the line is minus 330. So if you're going to take them, you're not going to get paid. And it does, says they don't cover. And taking Atlanta plus seven also seems difficult. So I'm going to lay away from that. That Jacksonville game is Thursday night. Don't care. Houston supposedly beats Tennessee by three. Boy, I mean, it's been overestimating Houston a lot, but sometimes they come back and they make it close. Man, I don't know. Um, it says empirically Tennessee has a 48% advantage by team stats, by that win margin. So it's it's only the point projections that are given this to Houston, and that's, that's not a good sign for Houston. So tough game to play there. Indianapolis and the Chargers, similar situation. Look at all these negative win scores here in the middle. Negative 27, negative 48, negative 34, negative 59. That's why these are all coming up as underdogs, these teams here, being the Jaguars, Texans, Colts, and Packers. Team stat-wise, looking at the stats for the entire year, those teams would not be favored. That's why the algorithm is showing that negative win score percentage. But the point projections with who's playing, which is supposed to be a better guide, which is what we use, are saying those teams win. 
And that's how you end up getting underdog lines on this team when the popular consensus is one way, but our but the algorithm says something different. So of those four games that are underdog, Jacksonville, Houston, Indianapolis, and Green Bay, on average, we're going to hit at least two of them, and that will that will play that will pay positive EV or positive um, profit value if you bet two of those and you, you know go two and two, but you have two lines that are at better than plus one hundred, you're going to make money overall. So that's an interesting way to to take to take a look at those in terms of straight bets. I don't do that because I don't bet a lot. I bet smaller and big round robin. So I'll throw all those except for Houston to win on a round robin and hope that you strike lightning. But but I lose a lot. You know, I lose a lot. A lot of days I would just lose because it's very tough to hit that. Uh, next, you've got Green Bay supposedly beating Miami. And I think mean, that win score percentage is so terrible for Green Bay at minus 59. Yet somehow it says they win a high scoring game. It can get them plus four points on the spread too. Miami has not shown that they can crush anybody lately. Since Tua's double concussions of like a month and a half ago, I just feel like they haven't been the same team. San Francisco only beats the Commanders by two, so Washington plus seven is what I'm going to go with, given all the new injuries on San Francisco. Even though they're a good team, Washington, I think, is still last gasping here for the season to try to do something, so this will probably be it, and we'll see if they can at least keep that close and within seven. Minnesota supposedly beats the Giants, but the Lions minus 200. It's kind of not great for all the way down there. It's only a two-point game. Giants also might be fighting, but it looks... Actually, yeah, the Giants won the other night, so maybe they're going to be fighting harder. And um, I, I'm not I'm not a fan of Minnesota way down there at minus 200. Cincinnati beating the Patriots by a couple at minus 170. Cincinnati's a very good team, and I, I will take Cincinnati. I, I have faith in that team. they got a positive win score of 19.5%. They just showed Tampa Bay how it's done last week. That team has good defense, and they're well-run, and I, I I think they can beat the Patriots um, even away. They, they're used to playing in the cold a little bit. So I, I will take Cincinnati there, even though the line not great at minus 170. And in this Denver Rams game, I saw an over-under set at 36.5 and, and thought maybe an over could happen in that game in L.A. It's not in Denver. So I might go there because you see how close that game is. Uh, that I, I don't want to take a winner, but it's so close that they might, you know, tie or be fighting for points late to get more points in that game. So I think the over is the play there. So in summary, what I'm probably going to do uh, is take the over in the Rams game, the Bengals to win. I'm going to skip over the Minnesota game. I'm going to take the Commanders plus seven. I'm going to take Green Bay to win at plus 175. Take Indianapolis to win at plus 195. I'm going to pass on the Houston-Tennessee game. I'm passing on the Jacksonville Jets game. I'm passing on the Ravens game because the line's not good. I'm going to take Philadelphia plus five because I now like rooting against Dallas after they ruined me last week. I'm going to take Buffalo to win because it's a round robin. I think they're going to win. I'm going to take the Steelers to win. I'm going to take the Saints to win maybe the over. I think I want to take this over 32. I want to see them stay under 32. If I lose to two teams that can't put up 32 points, then I lose. I'll double check the weather, but I think that's my bet there because the Saints are so tough to predict and i just want to kind of be rooting for weird snow points skipping over the tampa bay game and i'm taking detroit to win and i'm probably taking the chiefs to win over the seahawks so there's a lot of picks in there those are my round robins good luck everyone enjoy week 16 i don't think there's going to be another sports algorithm video today because i got other stuff going on so good luck mail your picks be winning